الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه جميعا ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وإن الأصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتاتها كل محتاتة بدع وكل بدع ضلالة وقال الله تعالى في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته like to welcome you to another session from the commentary in the 40 hadith of Imam Anawi rahimullah and inshallah today we're going to study hadith number 21 the hadith of istiqamah so now let us inshallah begin the recitation of the hadith عن أبي عمر وقيل أبي عمر سفيان بن عبد الله رضي عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي في الإسلام كولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا غيرك قال قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم رواه مسلم On the authority of Abu Amr Though others call him Abu Amr Sufyan bin Abdullah or Abdillah I said O Messenger of Allah So salam Tell me something about Islam which I could not ask anyone about, save, or accept you. He said, Say, Kul, Amantu Billah, I believe in Allah, Thumma Staqim. And then have istiqama. Yani, stand firm and steadfast, and this is really in Sahih Muslim. So, as is our tradition, we're going to go into just a few points regarding the narrator, which is in this case Abu Amr. And also another name for him is Abu Amr Sufyan bin Abdullah or Abdillah. And his lineage goes back to Banu Taqif in Taif. So he was actually from the people of Taif. Another name of course is, so before going back to Taif, Abu Amr, after accepting Islam, asked the Prophet Wasallam about a piece of advice. Okay. And this is the advice which he asked. He asked to give him something which only he could give him. Okay. Remember, he just accepted Islam. And the Prophet wanted to give him something, obviously, uh, you know, being Rasulullah, uh, being most knowledgeable of what is best beneficial for this young, this Sahabi young in Islam. And he said, believe in Allah. Again, the Sahabi just accepted Islam. So believe in Allah. Yani believe firmly in Islam in Islam, and then have istiqamah. And inshallah, we're going to look at this very dynamic concept very shortly. So this Sahabi also resided in Medina, Manawara, during the Khilaf of Umar anhu. And Umar an made him actually responsible for zakah from the people of Ta'if. Okay. Perhaps this is the only authentic hadith from this Sahabi. He is Students were actually his immediate sons. Okay, but there also included other great people such as Urwa bin Zubair. So let us now go into the muqaddim of this hadith. And this is again one of the hadiths which are short and sweet. Has a lot of potency but yet just a few words and again jawami al-kalim of the Prophet sallallahu So let's go into the word istiqama because Rasulullah says thumma staqim. So what is istiqama? So the literal meaning of istiqama is to go straight in the right direction, acting rightly, allowing no deviation. Yani, for example, as we say, ahdana sirat al mustaqim. It is derived from the stem, which is qiyam, which implies the continuity of doing something and following up with it and making sure that it is done the right way, neither deviating nor swerving from it. That's why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously, 17 times or more, daily, to guide us, to have istiqama on this deen, on this path. And this word has been used in the Qur'an Kareem many times, in many ayat. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says in Surah Hud, Ayah 12, so here, Allah subhanahu wa says, Therefore stand firm. Fastaqim. As you are commanded. Kama umirta. And those who turn in repentance with you. And do not transgress, for he sees well all that you do. Okay. And Ibn Abbas anhuma said, Mufassir al-Quran, right, one of his other names, said that this ayah was the hardest and most difficult ayah of the Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is not an easy task, even though this is just a couple of words to have his tikam, but this is extremely a very deep word which is very comprehensive. To have istiqama on the deen. Furthermore, and the Prophet ﷺ also says in another hadith, he says, try to go straight, although you will not be able to do so. Act, and the best of your action is this salah. And only a mu'min is constant as wudu. The hadith is sahih in the mawatta of Imam Malik. We mentioned that mawatta also, the hadith selections are on the same grade as a hadith in Bukhari Muslim from a hadith slant. Okay. Anyway, going forward, in ayah 15 of Surah Shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالِكَ فَدْعَ وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say unto this religion, Invite, stand steadfast as you are commanded and do not follow their desires. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fastakim kama umirt. Again, synonymous with the prior ayah. Wala tattabi ahwa'ahum. And do not follow their desires. So based on these two ayah, istiqam is to stand firm and steadfast to what we have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fulfill His obligations and to avoid the prohibitions. So this is a concept where we are seeing again and again to fulfill the obligations laid down on us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to avoid His prohibitions. Okay, so we should be cautious not to be misled also by our desires or other external influences. Okay, So they can lead us astray from being a mustaqim, being on istiqamah and causes to deviate from the straight path. And this is again the objective of our enemy, our arch enemy Iblis. Ibn Rajab, uh, rahimullah, explains that istiqamah means to number one, follow the straight path. Sirat al ladina namta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim, wal al Okay, the path of those whom you have favored and not the path of those who have earned your anger and have been led astray. Okay, I mean. So, as we mentioned before, in terms of the definition, it is also, again, without turning left and right, so that we do not make a detour from that sirat. And it also encompasses all acts of obedience as well, both internal and external. Remember, uh, the actions of the heart are still actions. Okay, So, iman, for example, has many different components and things we have to believe in. But also, the limbs also, again, act as well, so there's internal and external actions as well. Okay, so our actions are not just things which we do, but also actions of the heart as well. And it also, as we've discussed many times before, uh, we have to stay away from the hudud Allah and abandon all the prohibitions. So, therefore, we can see that istiqamah encompasses the whole deen. Again, another multifaceted concept which we see through these beautiful hadith. Again, building that strong, beautiful house of Islam. Okay, this is what our goal is from getting these wisdoms from these beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay. So where will we find the requirements for istiqamah? Okay. So for example, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taqweer, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمٌ It is but a reminder for the world. For he who wishes to be upright, okay, and what are the rewards for the one who shows istiqamah? 
So further lessons from this beautiful hadith. Kul amantu billah tummastaqim. Okay. So here we see this is another hadith about counsel. Remember we had the hadith. Awsini. Qal la taqdab. Right, the hadith where the Prophet advised the Sahabi, do not be angry. This is another hadith about counsel where the companion is asking counsel and advice from the Prophet He's saying, O Messenger Allah, tell me something. Tell me something about which I can ask of no one but you. Okay. So this is their concern of the Sahaba, for example, for tarbiyah for advice and correction, asking comprehensive advice so that they can change, they can be upright, they can attain Jannah, they cannot deviate. The Sahaba were the most committed people on the face of the earth, save the Anbiya. This is the blessing of this Ummah. We had such great followers, like no other followers of their Anbiya or their Rusul, like the Sahaba. And inshallah, we are trying our best as well to uh, be on that same path as these beautiful Sahaba, the Prophet So the Prophet said, "Kul amantu mastaqim." And what this shows from this statement is that iman it comes first before being steadfast, okay? because the Prophet used the word thumma, then which indicates an order. Okay, so iman comes first, and then we say upon that iman, and then we stay steadfast on it. So there are two matters here. Number one is that we have correct iman and belief. What's the point if we're acting on something which has fault in it? So our iman has to be firm. We have to follow the correct aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama. We have to not deviate. We cannot have shirky ideas. We cannot have ideas which are bid'ai. Okay, so it's very important. We have to have the proper iman, the belief. We have to be of that the saved sect or Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And then we have to remain steadfast upon it. So there is no point again to being steadfast on a false belief. Like there is no point in having also a correct belief but straying from it. So these go hand in hand. And this is the point of this beautiful short hadith. So number one, Amantu Billah. And again we should say this frequently. Amantu Billah. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa shu'anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And then set fast on it. Okay. So when a person says, Amantu Billah, this includes beliefs, this includes statements, and also the actions which come from that. Because as we mentioned before, in the discussion of Hadith number 2 and Hadith number 3 from this collection, Iman is not just about belief, but it is also hand in hand about actions. Because if you're not doing those commandments of Allah, what type of Iman do you have? It's a faulty Iman. So why did the Prophet ﷺ also tell someone who already believed to have iman? For example, he took the shahada. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, Kul amantu billah. So there's two opinions here. Number one is that it is a renewal, a revitalization of one's iman. This is like Allah's statement where he says in Surah Nisa, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu aminu billahi wa rasoolihi wal kitab alladhi nazzala ala rasoolihi wal kitab alladhi nazzala ala rasoolihi wal kitab alladhi anzala min qabl wa man yakfur billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri faqad dal faqad dal dalalan ba'ida o oh, you who believe Believe in Allah and His Messenger. Aminu billahi wa rasuli. And the book that He has sent down upon you, His Messenger and Scripture which He sent before you. Okay, Surah Nisa, Ayah 136. So we are all in need of revitalization of our Iman. It is like paint which dries and begins to scrape off. And many of us wonder what happened to our Iman? Why has it decreased? So we need to renew our iman regularly. We're doing something wrong. We're doing, doing sins. We may not be continuing on knowledge. We may not be reading the Quran regularly. We may not be in contact with the hadith. We may be in contact with bad people or bad social gatherings. So we need to always 
to muhasaba, right? to make sure that iman is constant, it is firm, it is increasing. You know, we're adding on the scales of the good side, on the mizan, we're adding the hasanat and not tipping the scale on the other, on the left. So we need to renew our iman regularly. We need to bring ourselves to account before we are brought to account. Again, the famous saying of Omar bin Khattab, Hasibu anfusakum qabla yuhasabu. We also have to have khushu, concentration, humility in our prayers so that we are not just drones and just doing something in a ritualized fashion. Our ibadat have to have meaning, have to have purpose for that great goal of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying to attain ihsan in our actions daily. It's similar to how athletes need practice continuously to be effective. You know, we need to have that edge. That's why practice is so important. And also, for example, the preseason. Preseason, in fact, is more important than the regular season because it sort of primes the athletes to play their best when it counts. If an athlete had a bad preseason, it will certainly affect him when the game comes because they have not been ready, they have not prepared. And this is a long term preparation. This is what istiqama is. This is not a short term thing. So, similarly, how the athletes need practice continuously to have that edge, to be able to excel in whatever sport they play, such as football or basketball or soccer or whatever. Similarly, we need to have istiqama to make it to the end because if we cannot make it to the end, if what's the point of going all the way and then at the last moments you deviate, you have that bad ending. We all want to avoid that at all costs. This is what istiqama is so that we do not swerve, we do not take a detour and make it to our destination. So we also have to rush to perform good deeds as well and we have to also be primed to make tawbah, not wait. Because all of us do khata actions, we all of us commit mistakes, so we have to make sure we wipe out those sins and make tawbah and also rush to perform good deeds. Wa So the good deeds they wipe away the bad deeds. Okay. And also of course having tawbah. Ya Okay. Oh you who believe, make tawbah to Allah. Okay. This is part of renewing and revitalizing our iman. The Prophet says this statement almost as if he knew that this was a message that would be spread to mankind. So it is like a message for the whole of mankind, for the ummah. It is the advice of salvation for us. Do not deviate. Believe and do not deviate. Very short. Okay, just like the shahada. If we hold on to these two advices and are true to it, inshallah, it will allow us to get to that destination. So, steps to achieving istiqama. According to Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, there are five conditions that are needed to achieve istiqama in our actions, in our a'mal. Number one, the action should have ikhlas and should be performed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Number two, the action should be performed based on the proper knowledge. And number three, the ibadah should be performed in the same manner as it is supposed to be performed as exemplified by the Prophet sallam. For example, again, according to the sunnah. Our deed also should be performed in the best way with ihsan. It cannot be with laziness. It cannot be with lack of concentration, lack of khushu. As is the case, unfortunately, with much of the ummah, where the way that the Islam is practiced is like a ritualized cultural fashion. The brain is not functioning properly. The heart is not connected. It's connected to the dunya while the person is outwardly performing robotic acts. We're not robots. We're not drones. We have to. Make sure that all of our cells, all of whatever we're doing, are in focus, fi sabilillah, and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, we should also restrict oneself or ourselves to only what is lawful while performing those deeds. So what's the point if we're doing the five pillars, but then our earnings are from haram? Okay. Or we are hurting a Muslim, we're doing a major sin against a Muslim. We have to. Only restrict ourselves to the lawful actions, avoid the haramat, so that our other deeds are accepted. So, establish istiqama. Continuing. It's not an easy task, and it takes much focus, it takes dedication, it takes effort. There are certain steps we can take, inshallah, to achieving istiqama. And these steps, we can apply to both ibadah and also dunyai matters. Number one is, 
Remembering the Akhirah. Okay. Remembering what's going to happen on that day. Okay. Being aware of the final destination and the day of judgment will motivate us to do good deeds. And also it will scare us as well because it will make us realize that this dunya is just an illusion. Really it is. It's an illusion. It wants to trap you. It wants you to be stuck and not go on the higher pathway or the high house that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for us. So one should remember that once during the Akhirah starts the minute one passes away and leaves this world. And we do not know when that's going to be. So we always have to be on guard. Always have to have istiqamah so that we are not caught when ma'adullah we are away from the path. That is the calamitous ending. One of the sayings of Ibn Umar for example in Hadith 40 which hopefully we are going to get to Insha'Allah, bi'idnillah. He says, if you live in the morning, do not wait for the evening. And if you live until the evening, do not wait for the morning. Again, do not procrastinate. Procrastinate is also a weapon of the shaitan. Number two is musharata. Okay, what does this mean, musharata? This is to make a commitment to being steadfast. Okay, a commitment. Okay. Unfortunately, much of the ummah has a weak him a weak willpower and they're not steadfast. Their life is not for amantu billah. It's for the world. It's for ease. It's for other dunyai matters. Okay. Number three is mujahada. Okay. Again, we talked about the hadith on jihad as well. Jihad, a multifaceted word. And what this means is to strive continuously to the utmost effort to practice Islam with ihsan, to do your best, to excel. To not settle for second best. So struggling to obtain istiqamah takes effort and struggle and it just causes us to have ihsan. Muraqaba is another thing which is akin to taqwa. And it means to be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching over us. And this prevents us from doing hurumat actions. The next is tawadu. To be humble. To be humble towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acknowledging that no one is perfect except Him. And to seek forgiveness as well. Remember, kibur, it can nullify our path to Jannah. Even a mustard seed of kibur, it can nullify that. So we have to take kibur and haughtiness out of our hearts. Don't ever think that just by doing and following the deen to be steadfast, to do all those hasanat actions makes you better. No, it should make you more humble and be grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us. Because it's only from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are guided in on the right path, on the sarat. So next is buhasab, and we talked about this, as we should be, always check ourselves, always check that we are continuing and not losing our iman, and our iman, our gas tank was not on empty. Okay. Next is to be critical of yourself, critique in a good way. You know, self-blaming is another motivation for improvement and intending to do things better the next time. So tahseen is another tool or way we can allow to have is to come in our lives. And this means also strive for improvement. You know, we set out an objective to always improve ourselves in all we do. Okay, similar to again, self-blaming or muhasaba as well. So all these different things are ways in which inshallah we can allow ourselves to establish istiqama, to have istiqama in all our actions, whether it's dunyai, whether it's dini. Rewards for istiqama. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fussilat so indeed those who have said our Lord is Allah and then had his tiqamah Okay. Then Allah Subhanahu says the 
angels will descend upon them saying لا تخاف ولا تحسن وأبشر بالجنة and but receive good tidings of paradise which you were promised we were your allies or your friends in this world and also in the hereafter and you will therein have whatever your souls desire وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْدَعُونَ Okay, then you will have therein whatever your soul desire and you will have therein whatever you request. So again, a blank check. A blank check by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you want. This is for those who have istiqamah. Again, look at the great endless rewards and ni'mah and gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us if we fulfill just to be steadfast on the path. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ahqaf, Indeed, those who have said, Rabbun Allah, Thumma Staqamu, again, same, similar theme, then there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. These are the companions of Jannah. Ulaika Ashabul Jannah, Khalidina Fiha, they will be in it forever. Jazam Bima Kanu Ya'maloon, this is a reward for what they used to do. Subhanallah. You look at the great na'mah and fadl of having istiqamah. Again, going to the end, making it to the end. Okay, this is a journey. And we have to make sure we don't stray from that path. If we do, forget about it. All those detours are just traps for us. But we have to make it, inshallah, have istiqamah. Istiqamah is an important Islamic concept as it ensures us to remain steadfast upon the right and true path, the sarat, and to avoid deviating from it. Furthermore, it's very important since every Muslim is required to recite the Fatah at least 17 times a day. And this is a reflection of istiqamah. And the point of this is again to continuously ask Allah Subhanahu's guidance to keep us guided aright. So we've looked at numerous steps, numerous ways in which we can strengthen our istiqamah and, and continue on it. And like the several important concepts that we have studied in this hadith collection, such as Iman, such as Islam, such as Ihsan, Taqwa, such as Jihad, this is another one of those very comprehensive concepts. And we see that again, Istiqama encompasses the whole deen. So, Jazakallah khairan for your attendance, and inshallah may Allah allow us to give us tawfiq from these wonderful wisdoms of this short, potent hadith. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته